Well, while the world of esports is gearing up for another year of competitive play, Overwatch League fans are left waiting with some trepidation. The landscape has shifted somewhat. So to talk all about it, we called up our good friend, my former lover, Overwatch coach Ronald <laughs> Lee. How's it going, buddy? <laughs> What do you mean by former? I don't. I don't understand. Oh yeah, I we had a good thing right. I forgot. We have something in our calendar for this weekend. <laughs> yeah, don't forget. <laughs> uh, so let's just uh, jump right into the most important uh, issue at hand. I know everyone out there is wondering how I'm doing in the competitive uh, leaderboard, and I just want to say a big thank you to Ron for helping me out. I finally made it to diamond rank, folks. Woo! We finally done it. You're in the upper echelons now. You're you're you know very esteemed. Now yes. you can brag to all your friends about yeah. how cool and how many internet points you have. Yeah, yeah, and I, I have been, and they've all just stared at me very blankly and asked, "What is Overwatch?" <laughs> I, I get that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but uh, we do both know what Overwatch is. We of course both know what to expect with this third season. Localization is uh, one of the big things. Uh, the league is now moving out of Burbank in uh, California, taking the show on the road. We know to expect it here in Toronto as well. How how much is this going to impact the game? Uh, the game itself, not a lot, but for the competitors, quite a bit. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people have had concerns about just how much work this will be, especially um, even though before the localization and homestand games were announced, players are already suffering from quite a bit of mental burnout. Um, Overwatch League has been in the news um, fairly recently with kind of this trend of players dipping out and being like, well, I, I would love to be a pro, but honestly, this is exhausting. It, it seems not feasible for me, and I'm going to need to take a step back. Yeah, I, I do want to talk about that, but uh, I, I'm kind of... I'm kind of confused because actual professional, you know, sports athletes have been doing this for years, traveling all over the states and in Canada. If you think of the NHL, so why is it so much more strenuous for these esports players who are not under the same physical, uh, you know, pressures to, like, why are we seeing so many retire because of it being exhausting? If this is just going to be the first year that they have to do some travel. Right. So I think that really comes down to the way the game works in itself. If we compare a sports game like say basketball or hockey you have one map or one arena that you have to prepare for okay and very rarely do the rules change i yeah. know technically rules do change and things get implemented but yeah there's little updates every decades. season maybe yeah. but yeah I, I get it okay so it's the fact that the game is changing so much that puts this added pressure on the pros I mean, not only that, but if you compare Overwatch to other esports, like, say, CSGO or League of Legends, yeah. they're quite different, even though they're both video games, in that, let's say you look at CSGO, you have many maps, right, that you have to prepare for, but fundamentally, the game is still largely played the same because they have very few balance changes, and right. the core mechanics aren't really tinkered with all that much between, you know, weapon choice and stuff like that. And in games like Dota or League of Legends, you have one primary map that you play all the time, yeah. but it's only that one map. And because of that, you're allowed to have many sweeping balance changes to keep the game fresh. Mm. But what happens with Overwatch is because you have so many large sweeping overhaul balance changes yeah. on top of so many maps, you're always mixing their things up. And one tiny patch, because they can tweak the entire game, players find themselves having to relearn 32 maps or something every single time. And on top of that, um, you know, with the league structure in place and the seasons being so long, you don't really have breaks in between to kind of dial back and relax after you've done all your digesting. Nah, you just gotta keep traveling the world to new fantastic cities while the crowd cheers for you and everything like that. <laughs> it and, sounds uh, glorious, but, but really it is, I think, a lot of hard work. I get it, it's just hard to think of it being a tough life when you just see the spectacle of it, I suppose. Uh, but it's also yeah. apparently tough or no longer interesting for some of the casters. Uh, Monty and Doa have decided to step away from the Overwatch desk. What does this mean for the scene of Overwatch? So I think Monty and Doa are fantastic. I think they've brought a lot to the scene and certainly gave it an element of legitimacy and polish. Yeah. But I don't think, you know, just because uh, Monty and Doa are leaving, it's kind of the end of times. They, they are fantastic people and excellent at their jobs. Yeah. And I'm sure they bring a lot of insight to the game uh, and to the realm of esports outside of the desk. But... We have fantastic talent in the Overwatch League already that they have helped cultivate. Um, players who've retired um, 
like Jake and Custa, but I was just going to say they're going to be like moving into some of those roles. How do you think that's yes. uh, going to affect things? I think it's going to be fantastic. Um, honestly, Monty and Joe are great, but the insights of a pro is something that is one of a kind. Uh, yeah. Jake and Custa are both extremely funny, very articulate, uh, well mannered, and and perfect for a broadcast. Yeah. I think they'll bring their own uh, elements and insights that Joe and Monty couldn't possibly have well, done. That's definitely uh, it. When you watch like traditional sports coverage, you always have those retired players who can speak to what the experience is like. But when you have your first season of Overwatch League, you couldn't have that because there were no pro exactly. players. So now we're going to have yeah. those gamers there uh, who, have, who have been in the thick of it, if you will, uh, leading us into it. Now, you are a seasoned player yourself, a seasoned coach as well. Uh, what are you telling your players these days about how to play in the current meta? We're obviously still dealing with this double shield thing as Sigma has not really been nerfed as much as maybe we think he ought to be. So uh, what are your thoughts in terms of how teams are going to be approaching the current meta as we open up this new season? Are we going to get a new uh, uh, hero before the season starts? Um, I doubt we'll get a new hero right when the season starts. I think we'll get teasers and stuff. It makes sense to me that when all the news is circulating around the start of Overwatch League that they would release some sort of teaser for a new hero. That yeah. is my expectation. But as for talks about the meta and double shield, um, right now the name of the game is Poke. You're going to want to break those shields very fast because although there are two of them, they are more flimsy. Uh, it really facilitates this. And what's probably the strongest pick in the meta right now, the side Sigma, is actually Baptiste. Uh, he is very overbearing, and he has a power powerful kit that allows you to play with immortality in yeah. a lot of interesting ways. Um, Jeff Kaplan, actually the man himself on forums yesterday, has mentioned that they're actually looking to tweak it and really remove some of that power. But until then, uh, the name of the game is Break Shields Fast, Yeah. look to force out the immortality fields sooner, and then the team that forces it out first can then use theirs not defensively, but offensively and kind of throw it forward, make space, and allow you to kind of bridge that gap and run into the enemy team. Is this one of the big problems of Overwatch as a whole? Because it always feels like there's like one hero power that you kind of anchor your whole strategy around. And is there a solution you could propose that would mitigate it? The, the whole thing is your responsibility now, Ron. How do you fix it? <laughs> I think more frequent updates would really help with this sort of thing. Yeah. What happens is when a patch is let to sit for so long and people really get to uh, minutely pick out the strong things and the weak things and everyone suddenly has an idea because they've had maybe you know four or five months at HS or more, mm. then it really boils down to who can exploit those really powerful points the strongest. Yeah. But if every, let's say, month and a half, two months, we got more frequent but smaller changes to help dial certain things down and pump things up. Even if the game isn't necessarily balanced, the perception of the game will be that we're still in a transitionary phase and we'll never get to settle in something that's like so rooted and, and one or two powerful abilities because mm -hmm. people will always be more inclined to experiment. Uh, I want to ask you about something you tweeted about recently with, with Sigma being broken. I mean, I guess the argument typically is that it's Baptiste and Sigma who need the most adjustments. So yeah. what would you propose? How would we change up Sigma to make the game better? So so like my tweet says, um, I think thematically Sigma is, you know, this, uh, you know, deranged, uh, right, astrophysicist who, who's had this encounter with um, you know, science in a way that gives him like the split personality and, and he can control gravity and that's all really cool, but... He also makes a barrier! Him. Yeah, he <laughs> creates like this barrier really randomly and it doesn't <laughs> seem to fit thematically. Yeah. So what I was suggesting is, you know, keep all the fun stuff about him, you know, manipulating gravity and lifting people into the air and manipulating these, those balls that can do damage because he's whipping them around super fast, but remove the barrier element that so many people are frustrated about and restructure him to be more of this bulky bruiser a la Roadhog or something that lets say, him yeah, work around and deal damage, but work more to soak through his body and, and stuff rather than deploying a shield. Right, yeah. I mean, he doesn't... There's no counter, or should I say, um, no collaborator to Roadhog. He doesn't have an equal in the game so far, whereas, uh, you know, Hamster and Monkey and Diva are all these divey tanks, and you get your right, right. Card and Yeah, so they should maybe add something that's at least comparable to, to Roadhog and maybe adjust Sigma 
in that manner. Uh, but let's talk about uh, adjusting the uh, divisions within Overwatch League. It did feel like Pacific Division was maybe overpowered in the uh, previous season. What are your thoughts on the divisions going into this new season? Have they divided things even further? I thought I saw that somewhere online, but I could be entirely mistaken. Um, I personally think the division be between the two sides aren't as jarring as most people say. I okay. think um, results from the very top teams of the table really kind of make people think that, but um, as time went by in the season, and we see this all the time, it's during the later stages people start to catch up. Right. Um, and the teams with dramatic leads in the beginning don't lose them. So it, it skews the results in, in that sort of way, but in Season 3 and from looking at all the roster moves and stuff like that, I think we'll have quite a bit more of an even playing field from the beginning. Mm. Um, and a lot of people will be surprised at some of the weaker teams from last season being able to pick things up this season and evening out the playing field. Including the Toronto Defiant? Uh, I, I'm hopeful <laughs> for the Toronto Defiant, and yeah. I think teams like Florida Mayhem, who have been you know, awful for the first two seasons, if we're, if we're going to be blunt, um, yeah. I think they'll be quite a bit better this season. Um, teams like Valiant, who have you know restructured quite a bit as well, uh, even though they look weaker in overall star power, mm. uh, they're also going to be looking super competitive. So overall, really excited to see how close this league can get this season. Yeah, well, me too. I'm looking forward to the action starting in February and looking forward to jumping back in game with you, Ron. Thanks so much for talking with me. Oh, thank you, AJ. As always, let's play some more when I get home. Yeah, for sure. All right, catch you next time, bud.